You know, it's been surprisingly difficult to find an external USB-C hub that's both fast, has M.2, that was a big deal, and doesn't roast my M.2 until now. I finally found one. This is the Acasa 6-in-1 40 gigabits per second M.2 NVMe enclosure with Thunderbolt 3, 4, USB 4, yes, the, yes, the whole thing. Let's just put it on the screen. Look at that. This is what it is. And, oh, that's a pretty good sale price right now. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25. Hit apply and that price comes down. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices from Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home. Windows 11, you can buy it directly. Windows 11 Home. And we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here. Go to your user center. Click on My Purchase Orders. Just View, Keys, and Codes. Then you can just copy and paste your key. Hit Start. Type Activate. Click on Activation Settings. Paste it in there. Click on Next. And you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. Start off with a bit of a story because I, I got this tablet and it only has two USB 4 ports and that's it. The tablet's awesome. I love it. So I'm going to be taking it and traveling with it. It needs more space. It has one terabyte internal hard drive. So I got one of these because it's, you know, like 30 bucks. It's not too expensive. It's only 10 gigabits per second, which I could probably live with for just playing games and stuff, but it doesn't have any cooling. The M.2 goes right in here and it just doesn't get cool enough. And I thought it was going to be okay. But since making the last video, this thing is disconnected twice for, because it gets too hot. So I'll be doing something and it'll be, it'll just get like all the way up to like 70 Celsius and then it'll disconnect. And I was, like, all right, this, this is not worth it. I'm ready to actually get something decent. That's when I talked to a Casus and we got one of these. So what is different here? Everything is different here. First off, it's USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4, 3 and 4 both work just fine with this, meaning 40 gigabits per second. And the M.2 slot on that, well, that can go all the way up to around 3000 megabytes per second. I mean, 2800, 3000, somewhere in that range is going to be the maximum you're going to get with Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4. But it has so much more. We've got two DisplayPort 1.4s that could do 4K 60 hertz. You can plug up both of those at the same time. We have two USB 3.1 but it's compatible with USB 3, USB 2, whatever. Uh, those are 10 gigabits per second each. And then we also have a power on the back. It's five, it's five volt power, but it, you know, you can plug up a larger power supply to this. So I mentioned that you can do dual 4K monitors, but if you don't want to do dual 4K, well, you can do a single 8K 60 hertz display. Just an option. Anybody going to use that? I'm very curious. So above and beyond all that, we also have a built-in fan. So this thing, in my opinion, is pretty loaded. The only thing that I think I would like to see as like an additional little bonus is maybe an Ethernet port. So that's the one thing we don't have. But I started thinking about it to myself and it's like, yeah, I love having an Ethernet port and, and, and all that. But I've never really actually used them because almost always when I'm traveling, I just hop on Wi-Fi at like a hotel or something. If I have Ethernet, maybe that would be cool. I don't know. Or if I'm using it on a train or whatever. So it's not that big of a deal. And I do have USB dongles like this that are Ethernet. So just it's an extra thing, but that's it. Otherwise, this thing can do a lot of stuff and it can do a lot of stuff at the same time. This has a really substantial metal body and you just kind of pop it apart. It's got some strong magnets that hold it in place and then some connectors there uh, for the power that goes to the fan and everything in the bottom. And this is where you put your M.2. Now inside there, you can see there's just a little rubber like kind of grommet thing that you pop on the end of the M.2. It makes it very easy to you know remove and install or whatever. You don't need any tools. You just pop it in and it was very easy and it works. And then we have two thermal pads. We have a half millimeter and a full millimeter thermal pad. So depending on the thickness of your M.2, if you're using like an eight terabyte M.2, which you can use, I'm only using a two and mine needs the thicker pad. So I'm gonna put the one millimeter pad on top of mine. And then you put the case back on top of that. The fan blows on top of that. It becomes a giant heat sink. And that is why this thing stays basically in the thirties the entire time, no matter what I was doing, it's always right about at what I would expect to be like an idle temperature. I mean, we're talking like this thing was almost 40 degrees cooler when you compare it to one of these enclosures that doesn't have any cooling. So I am really happy. This is going to be mostly used for gaming on the go, but I do a lot of photography and I like to do a lot of videos. So I'll be able to just put them on there and it's going to run pretty much. It'll feel basically like having an internal hard drive installed. All right, so here's what we're going to do. 
We're going to monitor the temperatures the entire time with Crystal Disk Info. I'm going to start off with Black Magic Design Disk Speed Test, which is a great tool. Just come over here, select the target drive. We're going to pick our D drive right there, select folder. Start off with that. Next up, I'll do Crystal Disk Mark, and then I'm going to run Addo. And as soon as all that is finished, I'm going to copy 38, let's see here, properties, 48 gigabytes, almost 50, 48.8 gigabytes of ROMs over to my ROM folder here. So I'm going to do all that back to back to back to back. Let's go ahead and start off right now with Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Test. I have no idea when to know this one's done or not, so sure, fine, look at that. You can do 8K on this just fine. Expect it to be a little bit faster than that. Let's see what the next test tells us. Going straight over here to Crystal Disk Mark and uh, yeah, clicking on all. Every now and then I like to click back and forth to refresh to see what the temperatures are. Okay, we stayed in the 30s the entire time. So yeah, pretty good. Let's take a look at the results from everything. All right, look at that. 4,000 on the read, 3,100 on the right. So there we go. And we can also take a look at the IOPS here. Looking pretty good on those randoms. This is great for a USB, really. And here's our Edo test, maxing out right around 2.9. All right, so I'm curious to see if we saturate this and plug a whole bunch of stuff up. So I've got an AC adapter plugged up. I've plugged up a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter. This is a Realtek adapter, just a, one of the USB adapters, and that's plugged up to the USB. So I've got that in there. Now what I'm going to do is transfer a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm going to transfer it to my C drive, not my D drive. And we'll just see how much this slows things down when it comes to doing a disk read and write speed test. So doing a transfer now over to my C drive, just stuff going through there. Now let's go ahead and hit start here on the speed test. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than that. So I can transfer it 252 megabytes a second. I thought, it, well, I mean, yeah, this is good. This is really, really good. So now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to worry about using a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter. And also, I have a 1080p monitor hooked up to DisplayPort on the left. So I've got all this stuff hooked up right now. And yeah, this is fine. So even while you're transferring a ton of stuff, it can still read and write just fine. All right, so I was able to transfer over a ton of footage. It's all there on my drive now. And at the same time, check that out. This is in gigabytes per second. Put it over on megabytes per second. And it's pretty much full speed the entire time. There were a couple of hitches while doing the transfer, but this stayed consistent. I'm okay with that. And then the temperature, excuse the weep stuff. This is crystal disk info. They always do this. It stayed in the low 30s the entire time because of that little fan. And of course, I've got the heat spreader on top of the M.2. So... Yeah, even while using it with DisplayPort and doing 2.5 gigabit per second transfers, it's still getting pretty much the maximum speed here. I'm pretty impressed. I didn't expect it to be able to do that. So pretty cool. So there you see those tests. It's this is this is for real. I mean, this is like a for real device, you know. Now, in order to use all the other stuff, you're going to have to hook up a power supply. It doesn't come with one. But what I was able to do was just use my tablet's little power supply and as long as it's five volts or more, it'll negotiate and be like, hey, can you handle this much wattage? Do you need this much wattage? How much do you need? And it'll figure it out and just it'll it'll work. It's kind of magical. That's one of the benefits of USB-C is, you know, you can plug up a laptop USB-C power supply or a tablet USB-C power supply and then power this. So, so I'll put this in my bag. I'll take it all over the place, take it all over the world. And I'm not going to upgrade it unless maybe they release one that also has an Ethernet port. Then I'll probably upgrade. But yeah, right now the way it is, I am totally happy carrying this and an Ethernet USB if I ever need it, why not have it? So yeah, it's kind of interesting, like the quality difference between something that's like 30 bucks and something that's 150 to $200. Of course, you're going to get better quality, but like it's substantially better quality. And, you know, the cooling is going to make my parts last longer and all that. So a lot of different ways to say I'm happy with this. And I've been messing with this quite a bit. I've been doing a lot of stuff, transferring tons of files while using it. And, and uh, you know, like I've got tons of things going on at the same time. It has never disconnected. Like this one would get just really hot and frustrated and then disconnect and you know the USB would still work like I'd have my mouse plugged up and USB would work but the M.2 would just be like I'm dead and then go away that's not gonna happen with this one 
Let's say you need yourself a travel mouse. Well, you know what? Your hand does not shrink when you travel, so take a real mouse with you. That's what I always do. And this is usually my travel mouse because, okay, it's a little bit smaller than the other one, and it still has a flawless sensor. So if you're right-handed, want a flawless 3360 sensor and a nice little package that you can throw in your bag, well, this is the one to get, and it's about to go on sale. So by the time this video comes out, I'll make sure that this is half price, which will be 20 bucks. So yeah, get one of these, and I'll see you in the comments. Music